Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Many of you guys are already aware that I was a massive fan of what Coach Prime, this Colorado Buffaloes program, has done during the offseason. And I think where you want to start is, yes, not only did Colorado just make this roster better heading into 2024, just the quality of players that they have coming in, it is night and day from some of the players that they had coming in during that 2023 cycle. But I think more importantly, it was a much more targeted approach in terms of where this Colorado team needs to get better heading into 2024. You go back 12 months and coach prime did not really know what this roster was going to be. He completely retooled the roster. I think after that 2023 season, it allowed coach prime Colorado to really understand where this roster needs to improve heading into 2024. And yes, they brought in a lot of different players and a lot of different spots, but I think they took a really targeted approach in terms of improving the positions that needed to be improved upon heading into 2024. I want to get into, you know, a few reasons why I think this Colorado team can be very dangerous in 2024. Before we get into it, as always, just want to say thank you to you guys at and it's been a blast taking deep dives in all these programs during the offseason. This Colorado program, especially with everything they've done in the transfer portal, breaking down the commitments, it's been a blast to talk about. The amount of support from the Colorado fans has been absolutely amazing. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. would love to get some feedback from you guys in the comment section. And Without further ado, let's get into this one. And I have really five reasons that I think this Colorado program can take a step in 2024. And it starts with an elite passing attack. And you look at a lot of numbers from the last decade in college football, having an elite passing attack correlates very, very well with winning on the football field Saturday afternoons. You look at this Colorado passing attack and what it could be. It, it could be one of the best, not only in the big 12 conference, but across the country as well, obviously starting with Shadur Sanders. Many of you guys know how I feel about Shadur. You can argue whether he's one, two, or three quarterback in the country. Leaving him off top five lists, in my mind, is absolutely wild. I mean, you go back to the 2023 year, and if you just dive into the games, Shadur Sanders was so impressive, not only taking care of the football, three interceptions on the year, not only being extremely accurate on time with his passes, a 69% completion percentage, they also asked Shadir Sanders to make some NFL caliber throws that, I mean, often routinely was making in the 2023 season. I think he checks a lot of boxes in terms of what you're looking for in that quarterback spot where I really want to focus the attention is the wide receiver room which was a, a strong spot for Colorado in 2023. There's no question about that, but I think even gets better heading into 2024, even losing a guy in like Xavier Weaver, who was very good in 2023. They didn't need to add that much in the wide receiver room, but I thought they added the pieces that they were really looking for and you know potentially lacked in the 2023 season. I want to start with Vanderbilt wide receiver transfer, Will Shepard, who – I think fits the exact role that Colorado was looking to fill during this offseason, that big body, a true X wide receiver that can play on the boundary. And you look at Will Shepard, the numbers at Vanderbilt, a passing attack and quarterback play that will, I mean, just pale in comparison to what Colorado has heading into 2024. He was able to put up over 2000 receiving yards, 21 touchdowns. You look at how Colorado's wide receiver room is constructed guys like Travis Hunter, Jimmy Horn Jr., Lejonte Wester coming over from FAU are some of the more uh, probably twitched up wide receivers that you'll see in the country in terms of creating separation, operating after the catch with the football in their hands. You look at that wide receiver room and you kind of wanted a bigger body, a little bit more of a presence in the red zone. I think Will Shepard just kind of fits like a puzzle into this Colorado wide receiver room. I think him Kind of combined with Amara and Miller, who flashed as a freshman, didn't necessarily put it together from a consistency standpoint. I think this wide receiver room that's going to be around Shadur Sanders is not only, you know, very talented, right? Travis Hunter being one of, if not the best pure college football players in the country. I also think it's really complete. It has a lot of wide receivers that can do a lot of different things. So that's what excites me the most about this passing attack. I think it might be one of the most dangerous units 
that you see in the country, I think the more important conversation to have when you're looking at Colorado is, hey, did they make the changes they needed to where they struggled in 2023 to kind of take that step in 2024? And I think a lot of Colorado fans are certainly uh, willing to admit, I guess, that the pass protection was a massive problem for Colorado in 2023. You just take a look at the numbers. Shadir Sanders sacked 10.2% of his dropbacks. That was 124th in the country. They've completely revamped this offensive line. And you look at the inside of the offensive line, I, I think that suddenly went from a weakness, a problem for Colorado in 2023 to potentially a strength of this of this team heading into 2024. I mean, you talk about Justin Mayers, a guy that only allowed one sack, only five quarterback hurries during the 2023 season. You look at a guy in Tyler Johnson coming over from Houston, not only has played a ton of football, but was phenomenal in the Big 12 last year for Houston, where he only gave up one sack and eight quarterback hurries on over 420 pass pro sets. You look at Tyler Brown getting that year back of Alger, or I guess coming back from the year he was ineligible, that certainly is going to help. You look at the inside of the Colorado offensive line and say, not only do you have some really damn good players that are proven commodities at the college football level, which is something Colorado could not say this point 12 months ago, but I also think they're really deep. I mean, I think you got probably five or six guys on the inside of the Colorado offensive line that you feel pretty comfortable about trotting out in 2024. Now you look at the tackle spot. I think this is probably where most Colorado fans are most intrigued about. Obviously, sounds like you're going to start a left tackle at true fresh as as a true freshman at left tackle in 2024. And Jordan Seaton uh, for the Colorado fans that follow the boys on the recruiting trail. I always said this about Jordan Seaton. If there was one offensive tackle that I felt was ready to play year one, it was going to be Jordan Seaton. Does that mean he's not going to have growing pains as a true freshman at the left tackle spot? Absolutely not. There could be some growing pains, but I think we all agree that even with those growing pains, and it's probably an upgrade from what the tackle play was looking like in 2023. Look on the other side, a guy in Khalil Benson who was solid for Indiana. I think he can take a step in the right direction in 2024, but has played a lot of football at the Big Ten level where line of scrimmage play is awfully, awfully good at you feel better about what you have at the tackle spot too. Probably the bigger question marks that you have on the offensive line as opposed to the interior, but you feel better than what you were 12 months ago. And then you look at another conversation regarding the offensive line, and that is the run game. Uh, Colorado did not do their offensive linemen any favors last year because they were, I guess the offensive linemen didn't do their themselves a favor because they couldn't get the run game going. They were consistently looking at those third and long situations where if you do have an offensive line that's struggling in pass protection, you do not want to be looking at many third and seven pluses. Colorado was consistently in those down and distances because they could not run the football. You look at the numbers last year, 2.3 yards per carry. That was 133rd in the country. I think Dallin Hayden coming in from Ohio State, that's very intriguing. But I think a lot of Colorado fans would agree that the running game starts up front with the offensive line too. And you look at Justin Mayers, probably what he does well. Yes, he can pass protect. We just went over the numbers. Dude's a road grader in the run game. Can certainly get the run game going. Tyler Brown, very, very similar conversation to have with him. I, I look at the Colorado run game. So not only is the pass protection getting better, I think they can have more success running the football as well. And this is, you know, not me getting up here and saying that they need to run the ball 60% of the time because you have one of the best quarterbacks in the country, an elite wide receiver group. You want to be putting the football into Shadur Sanders' hands, but it helps any quarterback to have an efficient run game when you want to use it. And I think the run game for Colorado certainly could take a stride in 2024 as well. So you look at the offense and say, uh, there's no reason to think that this unit is not going to take some substantial steps in the right direction in the 2024 year. And then you look at the defensive side of the football, and there's kind of two things that I want to highlight. One was the run defense. Obviously, it struggled for Colorado in 2023. And why that's you know, really important to look at, you kind of look at the numbers, 4.7 yards per carry allowed. That was 99th in the country, 176 rushing yards per game allowed. That was 102nd in the country, right? Bottom tier in both of those categories. 
not only do you have to stop the run to play good defense at any level of football, but I think more importantly, when you're Colorado, you look at how teams were beating Colorado or at least trying to beat Colorado. It was running the football, controlling time of possession, and having that elite offense be sitting on the sideline. And it largely worked when Colorado was losing games, right? You look at time of possession, Colorado was 120th in time of possession last year. I remind you, they were top 10 in turnover margin. So a lot of that had to do with teams just saying, hey, what's the best way to stop this Colorado offense, to stop Shadur Sanders, run the football, eat clock, don't let the football go to Shadur Sanders that often during a game. And it was a process that worked because Colorado struggled to stop the run. You look at what they've done in the transfer portal, it's Chidozi Nawakwa, a guy that's not necessarily going to fill up the stat sheet for this Colorado program, but is one of the better two gappers that you see across the country. You're bringing a guy in BJ Green who is a monster against the run. We're going to get to what he can do against the pass as well. Nikai Hill Green coming in from Charlotte, formerly Michigan, a linebacker that I know very well, a guy that can go sideline to sideline, make those run stops at I think they improved the front seven in terms of stopping the run. But another really interesting conversation to have is the pass rush. And I think on the surface, the pass rush maybe was not horrible for Colorado in 2023. You dive into some of the numbers and say, well, it wasn't as good as I think the numbers show. I mean, they were relying on safeties, linebackers providing pass rush because they didn't really have the guys on the defensive line to manufacture some of that pressure. Or you look at the best pass rusher for Colorado last year, not trying to take a shot at Jordan Dominic, but he was their best pass rusher. I think you bring in two guys that are significantly better than Jordan Dominic and BJ Green and Deion Hayes. You take a look at their numbers from last year. BJ Green, 34 quarterback hurries, a 14% pass rush win rate, just a disruptive force coming off the edge. You look at Jordan Dominic's numbers and how they compared it. Jordan Dominic had half the amount of quarterback hurries that BJ Green had last year. Then you look at a guy in Deion Hayes, second team All ACC member last year, 29 quarterback hurries, a 13% pass rush win rate. You look at Colorado on defense and say, no longer is Colorado relying on sending pressure to affect the quarterback because they got guys in the transfer portal that can do that as well. And it's a deeper unit as well. We kind of highlighted Deion Hayes, BJ Green as being probably the two game wreckers in the pass rush that Colorado has. You sprinkle in a guy like Samuel Okanlola, who's only going into year three. You talk about a guy in Quincy Wiggins, who's a former top 50 national prospect, him only going into year three. You could have some guys emerge as pass rushers too. Ray M. Drool, a guy coming from the University of Ohio, watching him play at Ohio, like there is some reasons to believe in this kid jumping up to the power four level and being a factor as well, specifically in the pass rush, you start looking at where Colorado really struggled with, right? Pass protection, establishing the run, stopping the run, and getting after the passer. I think they get better in all four of those spots. And I think that is massive for this Colorado team heading into 2024, a team that it's hard not to look at what they did, what they have coming back and say, They're not going to take a massive jump heading into 2024. An extremely intriguing team to talk about during the summer. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. We'll cut it there. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to y'all later.